Amen. If you have your Bibles with you, we'd ask to turn to the book of 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians uh, chapter 15, and we're going to begin reading in verse 48. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, beginning in verse 48, the Bible says, As it is the earthy, such are they also that are earthy. And as in the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. And as we have borne the image of the earthy, we shall also bear the image of the heavenly. Now this I say, brethren, that the flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doeth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. I'd like to preach the Lord be my helper this morning on the thought, getting ready to leave. Dear Lord, we thank you for your goodness and your watch care. We thank you for your blessed assurance that we're saved this morning. Lord, we praise you for those that sit before us, Lord, because we know that it's by your own good graces that we've gathered here and we have a place to meet, Lord, and that we can even come together in the country even as it is now. Lord God, we pray this morning that you'd speak to those that are here that belong to you. Lord, stir up those that belong to you that we might be a better witness. And Lord, this morning, by your mercy and grace, we pray that you just say uh, that you would save the lost and set among us, Lord, that you'd stir them up and that you'd give them life that comes from you. And we'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, before we begin, I'll just make a couple of comments. Most of the time, we are not ready to leave. Now, are we saved? Yes. But the Bible is very clear. The Bible said some would stand before Him ashamed. And I've thought about that a great deal. And I thought, how can we stand set in the divine presence of God and be ashamed? And the reason why is sin in our lives. The reason, uh, the reason why is lack of preparedness. Now, uh, we as grace people, uh, we sometimes want to take our responsibility and put it on to God. But despite the goodness of Him in salvation, and despite the fullness of His grace, we are required to live a life that's pleasing to Him. We are uh, to be in a, in a condition that the Lord uh, would have us to be in. Uh, he begins in verse 47. Now, if you remember, the Corinthian church was about as worldly and ungodly as it could be. In chapter 5, we learn that there is a man in the church that's having a relationship with what I hope is his stepmother and not his real mother. But they are told to set this man aside from you because the reason why he was bringing down the whole church. Uh, there has to be standards in the church. And everybody, no doubt, thinks, well, all you know to preach is separation. Well, if you want a powerful church, it's got to be a separate church. If you agree to this world and you compromise with this world, what you're going to have is a compromised people. And Corinth, and Corinth had that. They were living in a spirit of compromise. Verse 47, Paul reminds them, the first man, the man we're born as, the individual that we come into this world as, the first man is of the earth. And the reason he says that, the Bible says that he took and formed Adam out of the dust of the earth. We are, and you know what, I've always thought about this, I think it's very, uh, very uh, unusual because if we were ready for church or going somewhere, Mom, well, and we wanted to go outside, Mom always told me and Judy, you keep clean, don't get dirty. And, and in the same way, it's, it's a marvel to me, that's what He made us out of. That is the very essence of who we are, no more than dirt. And we like to get prideful and like to kind of sit up and say, well, you know what, look at me, look what I've accomplished. And all we really are is dirt. The first man is of the earth, earthy. The second man is the Lord from heaven. As it is earthy, such are they also that are earthy. Now, you think about it today.
today people that are lost act like people that are lost. It's, it's pretty simple. Uh, they, they look like the world, they act like the world, they present as the world, and very frequently the sad part is the redeemed do too. Well, we, we could be more categorized with them than they categorized with us. Earthy people. people. You know what? If you have a lot of sin in your life, and I understand redemption, but if you have a lot of sin in your life, whether you want to accept it or not, you are not ready to leave. Well, what a wonderful thing if you're ready to leave this morning. And what, what a more wonderful thing is that we can say that we are ready to leave. We are ready to get out of this place. We, we're ready that we are no longer here. That, that, that we're ready for a time when we will no longer have to stand and, and put up with this world any longer that we are where uh, we will be with the Lord Jesus Christ throughout the ceaseless ages. Now, I want you to look with me in verse uh, uh, 49. And he, uh, well, let's read the verse of the rest of 48. And as, and as is the heavenly, such are they also that are heavenly. Now, I want you to see, I understand just like Brother Junior taught this morning, we have a carnal nature and you will be fighting it the rest of your life. I wish you could say, you know, that's really these people that teach uh, of, hope, uh, uh, of arriving at perfection. Well, they don't understand my flesh. They, they, and you know what? As much as holiness people would think of it, they're made out of the same stinking stuff that I am. Uh, progressive holiness is not taught by the Scriptures, but I will say this, a progressive closeness with the Lord is. And people don't like that. And if you don't, if you don't understand that, think back to this time when the Lord saved your soul. Remember the joy and the goodness when He first made you a redeemed individual. How easy it was to walk hand in hand with the Savior and compare that to today. Now the reality is this. Most of us could say it's not as good now as it was then. So what's the problem? Do, do you want to walk in the presence of the Almighty with a distance between you and Him because of sin? Because that's really what it comes down to is, is if you have sin in your life, in that sense you are not ready to leave. Verse 49, And as we have borne the image of the earthy, meaning Adam, we shall also bear, bear the image of of the heavenly. You know what? I, I don't even think that we understand the image of the heavenly. When the Lord Jesus was trans, uh, transfigured on the mountain, one thing, the only thing they really saw is light. The only thing that they really saw was this overwhelming presence of light. And when you, when you think about how the Lord Jesus was walking in and out among the candlesticks at the first of the revelation, Really, that was light. Well, what a wonderful time when we really understand what the kingdom will be about. I ask you again this morning, are you ready to leave? Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Now once again, we have to see that progressive holiness can't be true. Because if it was, that verse would have to be taken away with. Um, if arriving at a, at a state of sinless perfection was a realistic thing, then death would not have to occur, right? Then, then death would not be necessary because in and of ourselves we defeated sin, right? If that is true, and we certainly know that it's not, you can look at the front of my my head and more and more gray is coming in and here on my beard there's more gray coming in we've not defeated that in salvation so what we must accept therefore then is death is coming death is coming 
Should the Lord's not grand return come in the next few years, I'm out of here. Uh, soon be 48 years old. And uh, at the, you know, the Bible says at the best, 80. You know what? For me, that's only 32 years. For some of you, it's closer than that. And so, with whatever time that you have left, would it not be a blessed thing to be ready to leave? At, the, at, at a moment, be ready to leave this place uh, of condemnation. Verse 51, but behold, I shew you a mystery. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in, a twinkle, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Getting ready to leave. Yeah. Now, isn't it, isn't it a strange thing? And isn't it a really harmonious thing that he addresses the portions of the flesh and then he reminds us we're going to be changed. We're leaving this place. We're not here forever. You know what? We become way entrenched way too quick. You know, one of the worst things, and you're going to call me a crazy if you hadn't already. One of the worst things that's ever happened in our America is the idea that we have to own a home. We don't have to own a home. But we get sold on that. I mean, even from the smallest child, that's what I wanted. I read, uh, you all know I'm very interested in my great-great-grandmother. I never knew her, but, but her life was uh, different to me. And what I have found, she lived 85 years here, born in 1842, died in 1927, and never lived in anything but a rented shack. What's the difference? You know what she was? She was a pilgrim. And I don't mean with the white hat and all that. Don't, don't take me wrong. She moved all over this country with her husbands, and she wasn't, she, she had one at a time. And uh, with her son, from iron furnace to iron furnace, and lived whatever housing they had available. That's okay. Now, in man's eyes, you go, oh, what a sad life. Well, what was sad about it? Nothing. You know what? She's pushing up daisies over at the Hildreth. Just like anybody else. Well, well, what's the difference? The important thing was only this. Was she ready to leave? Did she leave this place? And you know, uh, that's one thing. Sadly enough, I can't find out much about her. What was her interest in the things of God? The best that I can find about her is maybe she was Methodist. Maybe uh, just, that's the best thing I can find out just a little bit. Maybe she was a Methodist woman. And there's really not that much to even say about that. But you know what? Was she ready to leave? And more importantly, because maybe Griffey's been dead for almost a hundred years. Uh, more importantly than that, are you ready to leave? Because you still are in a situation that you could know. And yes, I said you could know. Are you ready to leave? And most of us, uh, many times, even the redeemed are not as ready as we think we are. Uh, verse 54. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up. In victory. Now I want you to see as he's leaving off this thought about ready to leave. He mentions the word victory. It will be a victorious thing when we finally put across this flesh. When we lay it down and we have it no more to contend with. It is a victorious thing. But what I found sadly among God's people is they live a defeated Christian life. We're supposed to be victorious. And how Satan approaches that, because he knows the greed of our flesh, is you want more and more and more and more, and you will never be satisfied. 
You will, you know what? If you get a three-bedroom brick, the next thing you want is a pool in the back of it. And if you get a three-bedroom brick, you're going to want a four-bedroom brick very, very soon. So what we need to realize this morning is that we, as the Lord's people, need to stay in a status that we are ready to leave. Look with me very quickly, way back, back in Exodus. Exodus chapter number 12. Exodus 12 and verse 11. Exodus 12 and verse 11. The Bible says, And thus shall you eat it with your loins girded, your shoes on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste. It is the Lord's Passover. Now, when they observed the Passover each year, their responsibility, the way that they were attired, was to be ready to run. Now, in the first great exodus, they had that opportunity, and, and they left that place, and they were ready. But each time, each year that they looked back on the annual Passover, they were to be dressed like they were ready to run. Now, what about you? Now, I'm not going to get on clothing, but are you ready to run? Are you ready to leave here? Are you ready to go? Oh, yes, Brother Lafferty, I was saved this and that and so. I'm glad you're saved. Blessed be the name of the Lord. But I ask you, are you ready to leave? And there is a difference. Are you in tune with the Holy Ghost? Are you in tune with the Savior? Now, let me say this, that if you're not, first and foremost, make your calling and election sure. Be sure that you're sure that you're sure. And then once you say, yes, blessed be the name, I'm sure that I'm sure, then start going through your life. Because you're going to be accountable for it. Every minute of every day, you are accountable. And you know, when I think of that, it really makes me ashamed. What about your prayer life? How many, time, how many minutes in a day, and it's a, shame, it's a shame I can't say hours, but how many minutes in a day do you spend before the throne of grace? That's getting ready to leave. How, how, much, how much time you spend right here. That's getting ready to leave. And I know all the confines of the flesh. I, I truly understand that. I, I know the sometimes what we think we have to have. But what I have found are our diet for the things of this world. We take on things that, that we perceive and, and we perceive it as a, as a need and a must when all it does is entrap us. We do not have to own a house. We do not have to have a wonderful brand new car every six years. We don't have to have those things. But we've convinced ourselves we do. Right? So that makes me think a lot of us... You know, we know, and we'll get to that in a minute, a minute, to come out from among them and be a separate. And certainly I know how that applies to lifestyle. But a lot of times what we need to know is this. Coming out makes us feel good. It makes us so we're not entrenched. It makes us so that we don't have to be in one place forever. You know, with about convince ourselves that that's the only good way. I mean, we're in the South. Will and Sarah from the Deep South. We've about convinced ourselves we have to live in a place forever. That's not true. If the Lord says, get up and go, get up and go. They had been in Egypt for 400 years. My family, parts of my family had been in this area for over 200 years right here in Stewart County. Does that mean I have to stay here? 
Well, some people would say yes. That would that would you know that would be a needful thing. No, no. If there's no longer New Testament Baptist Church here, what I need to do is get up and leave. You need to go and live where there's a church. You need to go and live where you can serve in one of the Lord's true churches. And sometimes what that means is to get up and go. Sometimes what that means is picking out a dwelling that is close to one of the Lord's true churches. That's what many times it means. Drop down to verse 5. The Bible says, um, The lamb shall be without blemish, a male of the first year. Ye shall take it out from the sheep or from the goats. And ye shall keep it up into the fourteenth day of the same month. And the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it in the evening. And shall take of the blood and strike it on the two side posts. And on the upper door of the post of the houses wherein they shall eat it. Now I want you to see that these people that are ready to roll and ready to go are under the blood. Now... First of all, if you're lost, you're not ready to roll. You're not ready to go. You don't have the equipment for a quick run. When the Lord Jesus calls, you'll be left here. These folks were ready to run because they were under the blood. They, these people were ready to move and get up and go at the trumpet, at the sound when He says, you go, because they were under the blood. Now, the only way to be under the blood is to be redeemed. The only way to be under, that's what even it means to be bought back. The only way to be prepared is to be saved and born again. Be ready to move when the time has come. Be under the blood. Be ready to go at that time. And so we see that that's a necessary element if we're ready to go. Go with me to the book of Hebrews. Paul writing to the church in Jerusalem, or I, I believe it was Paul, uh, the, author, the author is uh, never really given, I think one reason, that he didn't, he didn't write it and uh, sign it himself like he did many of the church letters, I don't think he really felt right necessarily about addressing the first church. I think his criticism sometimes... He almost felt bad about it, but it was necessary. Look with me in verse 11. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 11. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed when she was delivered of a child when she was past age because she judged him faithful who had promised. Now, I want you to know, notice a couple of things. That Sarah was the one that laughed. Sarah was the individual that when, uh, when the Lord God and the Godhead, all three persons came down and said, you'll have a child about this time next year. She was in the tent, but away from the Godhead and away from Abraham. And in fact, the Bible says she laughed within herself. In other words, it wasn't a big gut wrencher. I just thought, yeah, right. Ever find yourself that way? You ever get discouraged waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting? Listen, we, we've been waiting 2,000 years. The Lord saved my soul as a 12 year old boy. That means I've been waiting almost 36 years hearing the same thing week after week, month after month, year after year, and still waiting on ready. See, what happens is sometimes we get tired of waiting, don't we? But it's none of your business whatsoever when the Lord Jesus Christ comes. The only thing is, is you be ready. When the trumpet sounds, be ready to run. That, that, that's where we need to be. That's where we need to operate as the Lord's people. Is whenever He makes the call that we are ready to go. Now drop down 
to verse 13. These all, meaning, and, and, and it was the faith of Abraham and Noah, and he'll go on to address others. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off, and were persuaded of them, and embraced them, and confessed they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. Now, I want you to see that they, they did a number of things. They believed them and they embraced them. I am leaving this place. I am not going to be here forever. I'm not going to abide here forever. But I am some point leaving this place. What a blessed thing. You know what? It's not my decision and it's not my thought. To decide whether I leave in the catching away or if I leave and you bury my bones out here beside the building. That, that, that is not my decision to make. But you know what? I've come to this blessed assurance. I'm leaving either way. I'm out of here. I'm gone. And so if I die, and that's what this chapter 11 is about, those who die in the faith. That's what it says. If I die in the faith, you know what? I want to die ready to go. I want to die as though at any moment he says it's enough. Come up here and I'm gone and I'm out of this place forevermore. Uh, in other words, I want to be dressed for the trip. That's what really Exodus uh, uh, 10, Exodus 11 is about is getting ready. Be dressed for the trip. I want my shoes on. I want my, my garments to be like they ought to be. And as soon as he says, go, I'm out of here. But most of the time, we don't have it on. Most of our... Remember uh, 1 Thessalonians? I'm talking about a fight with this world. Having your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel. See, they were ready to run, were they not? They were ready to go. And that's New Testament. Paul is addressing a church. Get ready to go. And you will not be ready to go abiding and just waiting around. You'll not be ready to run in a condition of the average Christian. Look at me in 2 Peter. I mean, I'm sorry, 1 Peter. 1 Peter chapter number 2, verse 11. 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 11. Dearly beloved, I beseech you as strangers and pilgrims, abstain from fleshly lusts which war against the soul. Now, as Peter is addressing a number of churches, he says, listen people, you present yourself as a pilgrim or a stranger. Now, you know what? Stranger can have the idea of being an oddball. And I hope you are. I hope you stick out just like a sore thumb. But also, a stranger is this. They just don't fit in. When they're around with worldly people, like, you know, what am I doing here? When, when they're on the workplace, Seemingly nobody else gets it but them. When, 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 you see the, when you see the news line and you see that the sodomites, listen, you know what? This, this foolish thing about the sodomite bar, I'm beginning to think it's going to get more attention than 9-11. I really do. You know what? I hate that they died. Uh, I really believe, and shoot me if you want to, I believe according to the Bible they died in their sin. But, see, because of their sin in our country, they're validated. I mean, it's a, and you know what? The first thing, I ain't going to get too far off. Our president said, well, you know, this is not a thing of Islam. I'm like, well, what do you call it? Well, you know, you know what? I guarantee you, if a straight American had gone in there and blowed them all away, it, it, that, that would, you know, it been all the, the straight men in the United States, we would have been, we would have been ready to be persecuted. 
Listen, we live in a messed up day. Don't get used to this world. Do not dig your roots deep. Because you know what? My 220 years of family history in Stewart County may be drawing to a quick close. Get ready to leave. You be ready to move. And you may better, you may be better ready to leave. That's where we, as the Lord's people, need to be. 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians chapter number 6. And yes, I'm going to read it again. 2 Corinthians chapter 6 in verse 13. 2 Corinthians 6 verse 13. Now for a recompense or a repayment or a buyback. Now for a recompense in the same. I speak unto you, my children. Be also enlarged. Now, we need to be growing as Christians. We need to be enlarged. This morning, what we should desire when we come down to the house of God is be prayed up enough that we can get plugged in. You know what? I believe this. It's not my preaching. It's not Brother Junior's teaching. It, 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 is, it is not Sister Brittany's teaching. What makes a difference is if you come in ready to be plugged in. And if you're not, listen, you're not going to get anything out of it. You sit there like a bump on, uh, like a knot on a log. You know what? I've always heard that all my life, and I finally figured out what it means. Number one, they don't move, and it's the hardest part of the tree. It really does. And that's how we sit. You know what? Uh, we just <laughs> we're 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 there, and, and we're not where we need to be. Verse fourteen. Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion have light with darkness? Now yes, certainly, I hope that we have sense enough not to marry someone outside the faith. I hope we have sense enough to pick our wives and our husbands out of people that believe the same as we do. But listen, it goes far deeper. You can be yoked up a lot of different ways. You can be yoked up with a church that's about doing half, half of what they need to do. You know what the Bible says about a church? You, you are fitly joined together. Don't that sound like a yoke to you? It does to me. So that means if you have, listen, and what I found this, and you know, you know who can say, who can change the, the course and direction of a church? God. So if you're not getting what you need, get up and leave. Because more than likely, if God don't, well, I know this, if God don't move, the church is not going to change. Why did we leave on the smells? Uh oh. You know what? That situation was not going to change. Right? And so we see then that we as the Lord's people, we need to be very careful what church we attend, what church we uh, yoke up with, and be sure that they're on the same track that we are on. For what fellowship have righteousness with unrighteousness, and what communion or agreement or, or uh, uh, almost like a party, like a reception, have light with darkness. And what concord hath Christ with Belial? Or what part hath he that believeth with an infidel? Now, in addition for an infidel to be a non-believer, remember this. For us, as the Lord's people, it's a non-believer in Christ. Now that can present itself in many, many ways. Yes, it's of Christ. <clears throat> But you have to be baptized. Yes, it's of Christ. But you got to hold out faithful. You know what? We have no business with those people. You don't want to hook up with that mess. Can you be a witness to them? I hope so. Can you tell them about the sufficiency of Christ? I hope you will. But that don't mean you join their party. 
That, that don't mean you, 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 you take them hand in hand and say, okay, let's have a big time. You know, we're about to the point where we'll take in anything as long as they say they agree on Christ. But what Christ are they agreeing on? My Christ is sufficient. My Christ saved my soul. My Christ came to me and not the other way around. My Christ is why I stand today. Is their Christ nothing more than a starting point? God help us. God help us. And so we see then, if we're going to walk in agreement, we're going to be ready to go, some of this junk, this junk has to go. Verse 17, Wherefore, because this is in your church, because it's still present, after the second letter that I've wrote you, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. Now, if that's true, and certainly, blessed be the Lord, it, it is true, what do we also have to believe? If you're not, He's not. In other words, if you're not separated, he, He's not going to receive you. Is that not true? Read the text. We, we, we have to believe that. Do we? I mean, we want to jump up and down and walk pews for the first part. But if the first part is correct, the rest of it has to be correct too. We need to be sure that we're ready to go. In a moment, we need to be ready. We, we need to be sure everything's hashed out. We need, we need to be sure that we can go easily before the throne of grace and not have to confess for hours before we, before we connect with the Holy Spirit. Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 8. A little test for us. And you know, uh, unless the Bible is speaking in parables, I have to believe that it says what it says. And, and certainly it means what it says. Uh, Matthew 8 verse 22. But Jesus said unto him, Follow me and let the dead bury their dead. Now, you think about the person that's most dear to you, and they die, you have a mission trip scheduled, are you going to go? I was presented with that situation. I could, go, I could continue with my plans to go to the Ukraine, and I knew very well Judy was dying. She died just days before I left. We buried her in the next day I left. What do you think the community would have said about Brother Lafferty if I left my mother to bury my sister alone? It wouldn't have been accolades. It wouldn't have been, you see how dedicated to Christ he is? It would have been, <laughs> that selfish, stinking man left his mama and his brother to bury that woman alone. Would it not? Which do you think it would have been? Even by supposedly the old people. Right? Let the dead bury. In other words, don't you be so entrenched with this world that you can't get up on the move no matter the reason why. Do you think every Jew was prepared? I personally do not. Remember Lot's wife. Matthew chapter 7. You need to close. Matthew chapter 7, verse 21, the Lord Jesus speaking His Sermon on the Mount. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter unto the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven, getting ready to leave. Now you come to a very fine line, finer than my hair, because my hair is coarse. 
the thinnest hair that you can think of. Are you ready to leave? What about the, the spirit or anger conjures up within you? I get very, very upset with our political situation. And boy, I can get entrenched really quick. But does that make me ready to leave? You know who will win in November? The very, very person God wants to be there. You know why? Because he's sovereign. And if that's true, then I don't need to be entrenched, do I? If that's true, I'm ready to leave. I don't need to be worried about the stock market. I don't need to be worried about hoarding things up. That's being ready to leave. Have you ever wondered, and listen, these left behind movies are so foolish. But have you ever wondered if you live to the catching of way? What will your stuff be? I mean, really. Me and Don don't have a lot, but we have a few dollars in the bank. We've got our 16 Healy acres and what's left of a 20 year old double wide. Who's going to get it? children claim to be saved? No inheritors? Who's going to get it? Well, I'll tell you this, the state will get it, and they'll love every minute of it. So what's the difference? What point is it? It really doesn't make a difference, does it? And I think when we as the Lord's people get a hold of what being a pilgrim is all about, we can serve them better. I really do. We become less interested in this world and more interested in eternity. That's when we don't feel like prayer is a waste of time. That's when we can put prayer before cleaning the house. Then maybe for a little while we could set away the TV. Because you know what that stuff is? It's make believe. It really doesn't happen. And even, oh, all I listen to is CNN. Keep my pulse on the world. What difference does it make? You know what I tell you about the health condition of, of our nation and of the, of the whole world? It's in bad shape and the pulse is ready to stop. So that sums up CNN, doesn't it? What we really need to know is that we're ready to go. I, I wouldn't mean even the air, don't you? But if, if that's not part of his plan for my life, to, absent, to be absent with the body is to be present with the Lord. And I still need to be ready. I need to behave and act as though I think he's coming any minute, and I do. I don't always act that way, but I do believe he can come any minute, any second. Be done and out of here. What a blessing.